Hello everyone. My name is Supartha Puddhar. Today I'm going to talk about our work on symmetries, graph properties, and quantum speedups. This is a joint work with Celeb Ben David, Andrew Childs, Andres Gillian, William Kressmer, and Dao Chen Wong. In this work, we want to understand the power of quantum computers. We know that quantum computers can sometimes solve some problems significantly faster than the classical computers. For instance, if you look at the problems like period finding, factoring, discrete log problems, then for all these problems, quantum computers can actually be exponentially faster than the classical computers. Whereas for some other problems like un unstructured search, collision problems, formula evaluation, and etc., cetera, for, um, for these problems, quantum computers can only be polynomially fast than the classical one. So the question is, what makes these problems different? Why for some problems we have exponential exponential faster quantum algorithms, whereas for the others, it's only polynomially faster. We look at this, uh, this problem in the query complexity model. Actually, most of the problems listed here can be modeled in the query complexity world. So in query complexity model, we ignore the processing time and we only consider the number of times the input is read. More formally, we are given a known Boolean function f and we are also given an oracle access to the bits of an unknown input string x. So the oracle typically looks like this. Uh, we query the oracle with an index i and we get back the bit xi. The cost of computing a function in this model is the minimum number of bits needed to be queried to compute the function f. So then we can say a deterministic uh, query complexity of computing any function f is the number of queries that we need in the worst case input uh, by the best deterministic algorithm for computing f. And we denote it by d of f. Similarly, we can define randomized and query uh, and, and, and quantum query complexity as well. Uh, we denote the randomized by R of F and denote the uh, quantum query complexity by Q of F. Now, we are interested in, in knowing what is the relationship between classical and quantum query complexity. So in this direction, there is this result uh, from 1998 by Bill et al. that for all total functions, classical and quantum query complexity are, are polynomially related. So they have shown that it is, they are power six related uh, this year, Adamson and others have shown that uh, they, they, uh, they improved it to power four. This means that for all total functions, we cannot have super polynomial quantum speed up. But then in the first slide, we have seen that there could be functions for which quantum computers can give exponential speed up. So the catch is that all those functions with exponential speed up are actually have some promise on the inputs or they are, they are partial functions, meaning the function is, is defined on a, on a domain P, which is a strict subset of all possible inputs. So what can we say about such partial, partial functions? Does, does all partial functions give us exponential speed up? So let us see. Let us, let us again take our favorite example, and. And this time, let's say this is the truth table of and uh, defined on only four bits. Let's say we take this, take this uh, function, and then we strike out some of the inputs then the function that we get this way, the partial function, do you get exponential speed up or at least super polynomial speed up? Now it turns out that no matter how we, how we uh, remove entries from the, from the AND function in order to get partial function, we can never get uh, uh, a, a super polynomial speed up. It was first noticed by Aronson in 2003, 2003 and then later Aronson and Ben David formalized this and said that for functions like AND and OR, we can never have, um, we can never get a partial functions from them, which will give us super polynomial speed up. In general, we can, we can give two more examples of explicit functions, partial functions, for which we can see the contrast. On one hand, we have this two to one collision problem which says that we are given an array of n length where each position can have m elements. Uh, each position can have one up to m, m elements. And the promise is that either it's one to one, meaning though no elements are repeated, or it's two to one. And we have to figure out which one is the case. For this case, uh, for this problem, randomized and quantum query complexity are actually polynomially related. On the other hand, we have the Simons problem. And the Simons problem is, is, is defined on uh, n bits to n bits, uh, with the promise that f of x is equal to f of y if x, x, or y is either all zero or a non-zero string s. 
and we have to figure out which one is the case. In this case, quantum uh, query complexity actually outperforms randomized query complexity. Here, quantum is log n, uh, theta of log n, but randomized is uh, exponential. It's uh, square root of n. So what is the difference between these two problems? It turns out that Simon's problem is much more structured than the collision problem. Now, let me, let me explain what I mean by this. So basically, our goal is to classify all the problems for which we have uh, exponential quantum speed up. And so far, we are seeing that all the problems which have exponential speed up, for instance, the period finding problem or the Simon's problem that we have seen in the previous slide or the K for relation problem, all of them have, all of the problems have highly structured or highly regular. Now, what I mean by the structure is that, so the structures are basically, we, we are trying to determine some property of the input assuming that the input satisfies some global regularity. So all these problems um, with exponential speed up has some global regularity. So can, what, what can we say in this direction? Uh, it is known that we cannot have super polynomial speed up if the function is too symmetric. It happens for a permutation invariant function. So a, a partial function f is permutation invariant if for all permutation pi coming from, coming from Sn, these two properties are satisfied. First of all, when, whenever we take an input from the, from the promise, uh, if we permute the indices of this input, then it, it lands inside the promise. And second, second of all, um, the function is invariant under the permutation. So we can, we can apply any permutation and the function would be still invariant. Under the, under the permutation. So any functions which are permutation invariant, for all such functions, it is known that we cannot have super polynomial speedups. So it was shown by Ambainisen and Aronson in, in, in 2014 uh, that um, uh, the, the, for, for such functions, randomized and quantum are, are power seven related. And two years back in 2018, Shayu has improved, improved it to power three. So we know that all the functions which are invariant under full symmetry, they do not exhibit super polynomial speed up. But then the question is, what about other kinds of symmetry? Can we have a function which is symmetric under, let's say, uh, under some group action G, which is, which is not necessarily Sn, which is, can, so for instance, can we have a function which is slightly less symmetric and then can it show exponential or even super polynomial speed up? So our work is an exploration in that direction. And we looked at graph properties. And the, now the graph properties have much less symmetry. So the graph properties are invariant under vertex renaming. That is, property depends only on the isomorphism class. Graph properties in the adjacent symmetric model setting look like this. A graph G is coming from the property. If we apply a permutation SN, meaning we apply a permutation on the, on the nodes, so we, we, we relabel the nodes, then this relabeled graph is also in the promise and the function is invariant under the, under the relabeling. So here you can see that even though these two, two vertices are, are relabeled, um, uh, all the structural property are still maintained even though that two adjacent symmetrics now look, look different. Now, from, from, the, from the Oracle point of view, we have, uh, this time we, we query the entries of the adjacent symmetrics. So we basically ask whether any edge i, i comma j is present or not. So we ask whether the entry i comma j is there in the adjacent symmetrics or not, and the Oracle returns us the value a i j. So it is clear that it is much less symmetry than the full symmetry because here we have n factorial symmetries instead of n square factorial. So then the question is, since it is less symmetry, can we expect super polynomial speed up? And this is exactly the question asked by Ambayanis, Giles, and Liu in 2010. And then later it was also mentioned in a quantum property testing survey by Montenero and De Wolf in 2013. And they asked whether we can, uh, um, eliminate such speed up for graph properties in both adjacent symmetrics and adjacent list model? Or could it be that there could be some functions which has exponential speed up? So our, um, 
work on, in this direction, but note that they asked this question also specifically for graph property testing. They said that because the property testing problem has a specific uh, uh, feature that uh, given any yes input and no input, they are epsilon far apart for, for, some, uh, for some fixed epsilon. So, so, so the question is, since, since the graph property has less symmetry, whether we can ex exhibit a speed up or not. So our first result is in this direction. And we have shown that we cannot have a uh, super polynomial speed up for graph properties in the adjacency matrix model. In particular, we have shown that for all K uniform hypergraph property F, randomized query complexity of F uh, and quantum query complexity of F are polynomially related. In particular, this means that for general all, all graph properties as well in the adjacency matrix model, uh, randomized and qu uh, quantum are power six related. So this means that whenever we have adjacency matrix representation of a graph, we cannot have super polynomial speed up. And similarly, we can show this for other graph symmetries, such, such as directed graph symmetries and bipartite graph symmetries. But note that this doesn't really resolve the whole uh, open question because now it leaves that adjacency list, list uh, problem, right? I mean, uh, we, we are asked whether um, you know, we, we know that for adjacency matrix model, there cannot be speed up, but can we have a speed up for adjacency list model? So in this direction, we have actually shown that, uh, we, we have shown a property testing problem for which uh, in the adjacency list model, for which quantum query complexity can be exponentially uh, faster. So uh, with this uh, and the previous slide, we have actually um, uh, fully resolved the open question um, raised by uh, um, 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 uh, Childs and Liu and Montenaro Diolf. But uh, more importantly, uh, this says that whenever we ask uh, the, the question about graph property and wh whenever we ask whether we have a speed up or not, uh, it really depends on what model we are, we are talking about. Um, so if it is adjacency metrics, then we cannot have a, have a speed up. On the other hand, if it is adjacency list, then we can actually have a have a speed up. The third direction that we explored is actually going deep down the rabbit hole uh, for other, other symmetries. We asked, okay, we, we, we now understand what happens for graph symmetries, but the question is what happens for other symmetries? Uh, so uh, can we classify all the permutation group, uh, group G such that function F invariant under G uh, have polynomial relation between randomized and quantum query complexity? So our, our result in this direction is that um, all the we have shown that all the permutation groups uh, constructed out of hypergraph symmetries are essentially the only permutation group that prevents super polynomial speed up. And we did this by fully characterizing primitive permutation group. Um, we said that if G is primitive permutation, then the base size actually tells us whether we can have exponential speed up or not. So we said that if uh, the base size of G is n to the omega one, then um, for all partial functions symmetric under G, they're polynomially related. On the other hand, if the base size is uh, n to the small o of one, then we can always find a functions for which quantum and randomized are exponentially far apart. In the remaining time, time let me explain um, all, the, all the proof ideas. So the first result relied on Shearer's proof. Now, Shearer's proof uh, for, the, for the symmetric case relied on the fact that uh, if we have a function querying the input positions of, of, an, of an n bit long string, since it's a symmetric function, we can, we can permute the indices first and then we can um, send a permuted index to the, to the oracle and still it doesn't make any difference because it's a, it's, the function is invariant under, under any permutation from SN. But now this time consider uh, a small range function R. The question is, can we repl uh, replace this, this permutation pi by the small range function uh, alpha? In this direction, there is a theorem by Zandri, which says that uh, distinguishing a random small range function alpha with a range R from a random permutation pi from SN requires omega R to the one third quantum queries. So this means that if, the task that we are performing on, this, on the symmetric function, if the quantum query complexity is Q of F, then we can choose the range to be QF cubed 
And then the algorithm won't distinguish between these two cases. So we can replace this pi by this alpha. But then even a classical algorithm can also query all those R locations that are produced by alpha because alpha has a small range. Uh, so, so a classical algorithm can, can pre-process pre all those R positions and every time an algorithm asks for any of the alpha I input, it can output it from those storage. So even a classical algorithm can simulate the quantum algorithm. So that's what, that was the idea of Chavez proof. So we have taken that and we extended this for more general graph symmetries. We said that distinguishing, so we basically showed that distinguishing a random function with range R from this time a random permutation instead of SN um, if it requires omega r to the one over c quantum queries, then quantum and randomized are power c related for every function f uh, symmetric under g. And we basically have shown this uh, via a reduction to Sn case. And note that um, uh, so, so all our reductions are basically a reduction to to Sn. So in a sense, it's so it's a series of reduction to um, to the Sn case. And note that uh, Shayu's result in, in, uh, depends on this, this Zandri's result, um, uh, this, this Zandri's theorem, but we actually do not need that because for our purpose, we actually showed that for us, uh, a collision lower bound works. So essentially all our reductions are, are from collisions lower bound. Okay, let me explain how we get the second one. Um, for the second one, um, uh, like how, how you obtain this, this result for the other symmetries. For the other symmetries, we have shown that um, uh, every time, if, if we take a G, which is uh, a permutation group on, on N, and let's say F is another, another unrelated uh, partial functions, then we, we, we show that we can always design a function G symmetric under, under this capital G, such that this relation holds. In other words, this means that, uh, uh, we, we can take, take f to be a function which already has an exponential separation. And then if base size, so b of g is the base size of the group. So if the base size is small, then we can always have a function symmetric under g such that it has exponential speed. And then we have combined this with a lemma by, um, by Liebeck from 1943, which shows that for the, at least for the primitive permutation group case, for the primitive permutation, uh, we can only have two possible cases. Uh, for, for primitive permutation group, either B of G is really small or G contains symmetry of a P uniform hypergraph. Now the P uniform hypergraph case, we have already seen. We, we know that if it contains a P uniform hypergraph cannot give us super polynomial speed up. So using this two, we have fully characterized um, primitive permutation group. And we have shown that if G is primitive permutation group, then the base size dictates whether we can have super polynomial speed up or not. So in one case, when the, when the base size is n to the small o of one, then we can exhibit a fu function for which uh, we can have super polynomial speed up. On the other hand, if the base size is n to the omega one, then for all the par uh, partial functions f, symmetric under G, they are polynomially related. Then we use that, uh, to, to, to say something about other um, uh, non-primitive permutation group as well. So in a sense, we consider permutation groups, so we can have this um, really nice diagram where we can say like, we have permutation group. So if the permutation group is small, uh, if it has small base size, then it already has large speed up. On the other hand, if it has large base size, then at least for the primitive permutation case, we can say that it contains a p uniform hypergraph, so it can it can it cannot have a large speed up, meaning super polynomial speed up. But if it is non-primitive uh, permutation, then we know that non-primitive permutations can be further decomposed into um, uh, transitive uh, 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 transitive uh, uh, groups uh, by just looking at their orbits, and they can be further decomposed into primitive primitive groups. So then we can look at like how many primitive groups are we, we are getting this way. Uh, so if, if uh, the non-primitive permutation breaks up into um, uh, omega one many primitive permutation group, then we can show that we can, we can obtain a large uh, uh, speed up. On the other hand, if the, 
if they break up into constantly many primitive group, groups, then we can show that if any of them is, is small, if any of them has small base size, then we can show that um, there is um, there's a large uh, super polynomial speed up. On the other hand, for the other case, we do not know. So essentially, all the uh, uh, functions which are uh, which which might have uh, which might not have a super polynomial speed up, they come from this case over here. Okay. Finally, uh, let me say uh, uh, briefly like how we obtain the uh, exponential speed up for the graph property testing in the adjacency list model. So the idea is based on the welded or glued tree uh, uh, in the adjacency list model. So we, we are given a welded tree and um, we are given two vertices, uh, entrance and exit. And um, it was already shown that this welded tree problem where two, two trees are welded together, uh, if we are given entrance and we need to figure out exit, then it is easy for a quantum algorithm, but it is hard for a randomized algorithm. So we just essentially take that construction, but note that this is not a graph property because here the entrance is given and uh, it really, the property really depends on uh, vertex leveling. So it's not a graph property. So we need to tr turn it into a graph property. So in order to turn it into a graph property, we took this uh, problem and we attached antennas to it. Uh, to the uh, to the entrance, and we have also attached antennas to the uh, to the egg, um, end vertex, exit vertex, in the sense that antennas are also a binary tree, and we call it a candy graph because it looks like a candy. Um, then it turns out that any random vertex is a leaf of an antenna with uh, with at most with with about half probability. So uh, if if a vertex is a leaf of an antenna. Then it is easy to find the uh, find find the root um, um, using so f f find the entrance um, easily and then once once we find the entrance it is easy for an, for a uh, for a quantum algorithm to find find the exit. But um, even if it is easy to find the entrance, it is still hard for the classical algorithm. So this is a graph property for which uh, we can actually see an exponential speed up. Um, but the thing is that this is not a, uh, a not a graph property testing problem. So in order to turn it into a graph property testing problem, we um, needed a few more tricks. So basically, note that the goal is to design a structure for the graph property testing such that this is quantumly efficient, but, but classically hard uh, to distinguish even for even from an epsilon far graph. So in order to do that, uh, we used uh, some ideas such as we used many copies of the candy graph. We have added advice edges, and we let the quantum algorithm uh, test using those advice edges whether a vertex is a weld vertex or not. And yet, the advice needs traversing the welded tree, uh, which is hard for any classical algorithm. Now, the property testing comes from being able to classically uh, test an entire binary tree uh, given the advice. And note that this traversing candy graph is required to find advice about whether a vertex is in the weld because advice is encoded as parity of, of bits stored at the roots. So ensuring, by, by doing all this, we ensure that um, uh, we get a property testing problem for which we have an exponential speed. And finally, um, let me stop with two main open questions. The first of all is that we have shown this, this diagram uh, there is still one uh, uh, fine-grained argument that we need to do in order to fully uh, characterize uh, all possible um, permutation groups. Uh, so, so this is this is the single case that was missing. Uh, so, what can we say about that? Can we fully characterize this case? And the second is, uh, can we find um, an uh, exponential speed up for another practical graph property problem? So, this is this is really a toy example for which we are showing exponential speed up. But the question is, can we find a practical problem for which we still have the, have the same, same speed up? Um, thank you. Thank you so much for, that's it. Thank you so much for listening.